How's it going? My name is Steven Christian. I'm a full stack AR developer and I develop a lot of AR apps that make more immersive storytelling experiences on mobile devices. And so on this course, we'll be learning how to take a illustration that you're hand drawing, turning it to the computer and also adding AR to it. So that it's a one of a kind AR art piece. And so on this course, you will learn how to sketch You'll learn how to draw a simple illustration. You will learn how to scan the drawing without a scanner. We'll work with image targets with augmented reality. We'll also make a simple user interface, learn how to code a little bit, add some user controls to 3D objects, animate in Unity, and also build and export our own mobile app that you can put on the App Store. And so join me on this wonderful adventure as we embark on the AR journey of taking a drawing to an AR art piece. Before we get started with the tutorial, I just want to let you know about some things. As you know, I make a lot of this stuff available for free so that you can learn and level up your skill set, you know, at a very low cost. But there are ways for you to support me. First and foremost, I'm on Skillshare. And so go to Skillshare.com slash stuck on an island and follow me and check out some of my courses that I have there. I have all the courses you see on my YouTube channel and many more. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Iltopia. Here, you could have subscriptions that are monthly or yearly, and you get access to my Discord group and a lot of sneak peeks of things that are coming out soon, from comics to new courses. You have a variety of tiers and stuff that you could support, so definitely check it out. You could go to shop.iltopia.com, and it'll take you to this wonderful page that allows you to check out all my books, coloring books, augmented reality experiences, plushies, toys, and many more. This allows you to support my work and any of the stuff that I produce and put out there. All the proceeds go to funding all these projects that I release out for free on the internet, as well as paying for medical school. Because as you know, I'm a medical student as well. Last but not least, Follow me on all the social nets. So the agenda for this course is pretty simple. We learn tools that you'll need. We'll learn a little bit about what augmented reality is, why augmented reality art is great, how to sketch on paper, how to draw the image and finalize that design, how to transfer the drawing to the computer, set up the Unity game engine, set up the Vuforia engine for augmented reality, We'll also add a user interface, add some user controls, some 3D models, add some animation, and then we'll wrap it up by building an augmented reality experience for a mobile device through an app. The tools you'll need to get started are paper, pencil, a thick and extra thick marker. Sharpies work great, but anything will work. If you would like to use crayons, Anything with color, that works as well. You'll need a phone with a camera and a scanning app, or you could use a regular scanner. And one of the apps that I like to use is Adobe Scan. You also need photo editing software. So Adobe Photoshop, maybe Adobe Acrobat. There's some free ones out there called GIMP. We'll also need to download the Unity Game Engine. We'll need a computer. We'll need the Vuforia SDK. And we need that for Unity. And we'll also need a license key. There are some resources that you can download that will help you with all these things. Again, this class is for a bare bones beginner. And so anyone that's familiar with just writing on paper, that's all you need. If you have some computer skills, that works great as well. You'll be walked through this whole process from beginning to end. So the way this tutorial series works is I'll introduce what we're going to learn with this bullet point list. And then after that, we'll go through the demo. And then some of these sections are going to have challenges for you so that you can challenge yourself a little bit and take the creativity to the next level. And so stay engaged with it. Let me know how you feel. Rate and review this. Be active in the comments section. It's all about creating communities and being creative and empowering others to challenge ourselves with our creativity. 
and hopefully that will inspire everybody else to take it just that one step further with this section again if you want to skip the section and just go on to the demo you can do that if you want to stick to the breakdown you can do that as well in this video we'll learn how to sketch we'll figure out what we want to sketch start with simple shapes maybe a circle triangle or square and if you want to diversify those shapes you can cut the shapes in half or quarters to achieve certain shapes also combine those shapes to build an image play with proportions and scale and we'll flesh out the image with multiple drafts of the sketch and so you need to ask yourself do you want to sketch a person a place or thing and so what does that mean a person can be either a human so we have our smiley per person right there it can also be a cat or even a bird So any, anything that, that moves and lives. We have places, so maybe your home, a building, or maybe even the beach. And things those could be anything that you could think of. So maybe a car, a crayon, or even a TV. And so what I always like to think about is setting everything up into basic shapes. So we have a circle, we have a triangle, and we have a square. And those are the key foundational elements for creating all these things. And so say if we wanted to make a person, we'll start with just a circle, and we'll just draw a circle, and that will be the head. For the eyes, we could have two more circles. We'll have one circle there, one circle there, for the eyes, one of the things that you could think about is if you have a circle, you could actually cut it into halves and quarters. And we'll do that with the we'll do that with the nose. And so instead of drawing a full circle, we'll do a half circle or maybe a C. And that gives us our our nose. And last but not least, we must have a mouth. And so we'll just do another half circle. And we have a smiley face. If you want to take it to the next level, you could give it some ears. You could have it cut in half vertically. And we'll have half circle for the ear. And we'll flip it the other side and another half circle for the ear. Next, we have our body. And we could do that with our rectangle. And so we'll make a rectangle and connect it to the head. We could do another half circle, and that could be the hips, and two more half circles for the shoulders. And so one thing that makes things great is that we can also add lines to this. And we have our legs and arms. And so one shape that we did not get to yet, but we will get to now, is our triangles. So for the hands, we could have two triangles. And then we could add lines for the fingers. And then for the feet, instead of it being a triangle with equal sides, we'll have a triangle with one side being longer than the other, like that. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And so notice how instead of it being equal on both sides, we have one side 
that is longer than the other. And using basic shapes, we could also add some crazy hair to them. And if you wanted to add a skirt, you can take this shape right here. And instead of it being having equal sides, it kind of bellies out a little bit like that. And so if we add that to our character, now the character has a dress or a skirt. And so with simple shapes, you can do a whole lot. How about let's do a car? Because a car would be pretty simple. And so a car, we have a rectangle for the body. We can have a half circle for the top. And we have two more circles for the wheels. We'll just color those in. And then for the headlights, we could use triangles. And for the tail light as well. And if we want to give it a little bit of character, we can give some windshields in the back and the front. And a square for the door. Then we could add a rectangle or a triangle for the handle. And again, with simple shapes, we have our car. And so now that we have an idea how to create with simple shapes, now we could sketch on paper. The challenge for this is to figure out a finalized sketched idea. So come up with a sketch sheet with all the different ideas, include a person, a place, and or thing, and then share your sketch ideas in the project section. In this video, we'll learn how to draw the image from the sketch onto paper. So we'll use a pencil to sketch the image, you get start off with a square, and turn that square into a cube, you give it a smiley face, and some character, and you give it a name. And then we'll use the Sharpie to trace over the sketch, add some bold lines that can't be erased, and then we'll take the thicker pen and give it a little more contrast to make it pop. In this video, we'll learn some cross-hatching techniques that allow the sides to have a little more depth and texture. Again, if you want to add some color to it, definitely do that. Okay, so in this video, we will be talking about how to actually draw our image that we're going to be making into an augmented reality uh, art piece. If you've seen with all my other videos, I go into detail about how to draw but this is really about making augmented reality stuff and really making original augmented reality stuff using the tools that we have in front of us. Instead of it being a, a wonderful masterpiece, which we could get into that later, this is just going to show you the process of it. And so uh, you won't be coming out of this video learning how to draw a masterpiece because uh, I have other courses for those, but you'll understand uh, sort of the process uh, with the very simple illustration. And so uh, with that, if you want to see more, you could check out my character design course. You could check out my how to draw with stickers course. You could check out a lot of the different other courses that I have available. And so with this, we will really just focus on uh, the core concept. And so in this tutorial, I want to focus on the cube because the cube is really, really great for allowing us to do a whole bunch of different things. Uh, it's sort of the building block for everything, whether it's Lego blocks, whether it's uh, bricks, we can do a lot of stuff with the cube. And so what I'm gonna talk about essentially and, and demonstrate is uh, designing a cube that will work for this, uh, giving it a little bit of character. And so I have my pencil, as you can see. And so with the pencil, I'll just go ahead and design a cube. And so one thing to note is that a cube is made out of multiple squares and so we're not going to be we're going to start off with the square but we're going to move on to the cube and so with the square because I have these lines 
here on the line paper, I could just use these to draft out my square, just like that. And so now that I have my square, I'm actually going to add some extra lines in an angle, about th three, about three lines in an angle. And then I'm going to connect those. I actually make this a little bit longer and bring this down. And because I have these lines for the line paper, it acts as a guide for me. And so now I use multiple squares or parallelograms or rhombuses, um, things with four sides, and I have my, I have my cube now. And so what I could do is I could give it a smiley face. So give it one eye, give it two eyes, kind of color it in. And then give it a mouth. And I'll give it a little tongue just to give it some character, just like that. So we'll call him QB. And some little boxes. Just to give it some character. So we have our sketch called QB and we did that just with a pencil. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our Sharpie and we're going to add some very, very big bold lines to that. Uh, because one of the things that we need to do is we need to scan this into the computer. And so even though we have a pencil, we want to finish the design. And plus, we want to make sure that the design lasts. Because you could erase pencil, but it's really, really difficult to get rid of the ink pen. And so all we're going to do is just go over this with our ink pen now. And so I'm using a Sharpie. You can use any uh, sort of markers and stuff that you like, but I like a Sharpie. Um, and I'm just going to trace over the lines. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you want it to be perfect, you can make it perfect. But for me, I tend to have a, a lot of imperfections in my art, and that's what makes it special to me. And so having those imperfections for me gives it some character, gives it its uniqueness. Um, it's really hard to recreate those mistakes or recreate those approaches. So every art piece that I have ends up being a one of a kind, even if I make multiples of it. And so I have the, out I have the outline now. And so now that I have the outline of it, I will go ahead and trace over the eyes. And then I'll trace over the mouth. And then I'll trace over the tongue, like that. So I can go ahead and Color in the mouth and the eyes, just like that. So the last thing is the finishing touches. It's adding the lines to the words so that you can see those. And I'll add those to the cubes. like that. And then I will take a thicker pen and I'll go over all the outlines around the outside just to give it a little bit more p 
pizzazz. It's what we call contrast, and contrast really makes the art pop. So even though it's a very simple design, you can make it pop by adding contrast to it. Color, contrast, and a few other things that I often go over in all my other art classes. And we're getting into art theory here, where uh, art is subjective and to manipulate that subjectivity, you're able to do certain, use certain techniques. And so with it, now that the outline is a lot bolder, it allows the actual art piece to pop out a little bit more. And so now that I have this, it's fully inked. Um, I'm going to actually just use some crotch cross hatching. And all cross hatching is, is you add some lines to the side and then you'll add some lines to the other side in a different angle to give it a little bit more texture. And so I'll cross hatch the bottom row. And I'll cross hatch the side so that we know that there's there's multiple sides and that they're all not facing the same direction and then I will cross hatch the other side to give it a little more texture on this side and I'll just do it another time as well just to sort of seal the deal. And so I did cross hatching going from left to right and right to left. Now I'm going top to bottom. And so now I have a forward face, then I have a face that has a little bit of shadow, and then I have a underside face that has a lot of shadow. And that is our cube. In the next video, we will be talking about how to make a digital version of this so we could put that into our app and allow the app to recognize this. The challenge for this project is finalizing that design. So we're gonna finalize the design. If you made a QB like me, add some color and some personality to make it really stand out. Make sure it is a 3D structure and not a flat 2D structure. Instead of having a circle, make a spear. Instead of having triangle, let's go with the cone and then post your design in the project section below. In this, we're gonna learn how to transfer the image from the paper to the computer without a scanner. And so making a scan without a scanner, all we're gonna do is use our smartphone with the camera. We're gonna take multiple pictures so that we have different ones to choose from. And if you don't wanna use the camera, you could download a scanner app like Adobe Scan there's other ones out there as well. And you scan the document and then we'll edit the borders of the scan if you need to, to make sure it's uh, cropped very nicely. And then we're gonna save it as a PDF or a JPEG. And the last thing is that we're going to send our files to the computer. I personally use Dropbox to send all my files, but you can email it to yourself. You could connect it to a computer, your phone to a computer to uh, transfer the files directly. It's up to you. And so this, I am going to be showing you how to make a scan without using a scanner. All you need is your actual phone. And so I have a Android device right here. I have a smart smartphone. And with the smartphone, I can either take a picture, which I'll show you, or I could take a scan. And so I'll show you both of those. And this will show you how to take your artwork from your paper and convert that to a computer. And so now that I have my smartphone, I'll actually open up the camera app and I will point it in front, make sure there's no bad shadows and make sure it's facing above. And we'll just take a image like that. And the big thing about the image is that it needs to be, needs to be parallel to, the phone needs to be parallel to the actual image so that you can get a really good image. So I'll take another one. It's always good to take multiples. 
and then you send that. But I'll send these all at the same time. And so uh, another one is I use Adobe Scan. And Adobe Scan works very, very well because it will trim the edges so that I don't have to. And so I will just scan it over the document, hold it steady, And now that I have the document scanned, you'll notice that it has a lovely little border around it. And so all I have to do is say, okay, this is, this is what I want. I could modify it a little bit more so that it lets me get some sides. No, go on that side. Now go on that side right there. And then I'll click continue. And from there, I have my image, QB. And I can save it as a, so I'll just name it QB, not cabby, but QB. QB image. And I could save it as a PDF. And I will actually share it. Click share. Share a copy. And I will share, add it to my Dropbox. By adding it to my Dropbox, I just click add. And it will automatically send it. Yep. File complete and it just sent it. So now I will actually do that with the images that I have. So I'll click images. And I'll go through, click those two images, share. Again, I'll go to add to Dropbox. And I'll click add and I will wait for them to share just like that and now that those are done I have sent my images now and so now we could uh, leave our QB image where it's at we don't need it right now and we can move on to our preparation of our image in this video, we're going to learn how to prepare the image for our AR experience. And so we're going to send the images to the computer and we're going to open the PDFs if you have them in Adobe Acrobat or Reader. And we're just going to modify them. If you have the images, you can use a photo editor like Photoshop. You could crop the image. You can modify the image so that it is flat and using the transform tools to fit the image to the right specs. And so if you have a eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, you wanna make sure that it's an eight and a half by 11 piece of image because that's gonna work great for the AR experience. And then edit the image to have max contrast. You wanna make sure that the black lines are very black and the white is very white. And then lastly, save the final image that you're gonna use in our AR experience as a JPEG. Okay, so I have my images here. I will actually open up my QB image, which is a PDF. I'll just open that in Adobe Acrobat. And once I have Adobe Acrobat open, as you can see, I have my image. And you'll notice that it's really hard to see the, the lines that I had with it and the pencil lines. So that's why I wanted to make sure I inked it because I wanted to make sure it would be recognizable. And so what we'll do is we'll take that image and we will export it out as a JPEG. And so I'll just say JPEG QB image. And then we don't need that anymore. And we have our image right there. And so what you could do if you don't have a PDF or you didn't use a scanning software is you can open this up in Photoshop and Photoshop is where it is at. 
So I'll wait for Photoshop to open. And so now that we have Photoshop, I will actually come out of that and notice how we have our image. So with Photoshop, we will actually click the unlock button or click the lock button to unlock it so that we could actually edit this layer. And then we are going to click Control T to transform it. And we're going to use our align tools. And so I like to pull down a So with it, I, I would like to pull down a ruler to make sort of a bounding box. And so a ruler at the bottom, ruler at the top, pretty much making sure that it cover, it touches the top and the bottom. And then I'll add a, add one right here for the vertical. And then I'll add another one for the other vertical. And I'll just have it about right there, just like that. So now we have our, our bounding box for our image. And so all we have to do is just use the transform tools to fit the image to its, its right specs. And so I'll do control T or command T, or if you want to go up to edit, uh, transform, we'll do free transform. And with free transform, you can grab, you can hold control or command on a Mac. I think it's command on the PC, it's control. And you can just move it up to the side so that it, that the top corner touches, uh, the top corner of the white paper touches the corner that we made. And then we can do the same thing on the other side. And then we will, and then we will have the bottom corner touching and then we'll have the bottom corner on the other side touching and so again you may have to play around with it a little bit it doesn't have to be perfect it just needs to be recognizable as a piece of paper and good thing is we have a plenty of other images that we could use as a backup as well but uh, for the most part this looks pretty good so I'll go ahead and click OK and I will actually crop this so that the crop only shows oops I don't want to have multiple multiple rulers okay so I will crop this so that it butts up with the actual rulers right here and we get rid of some of the some of our grid that we had and then I'll click OK. And then I'll hide my rulers so I have a better view. So I'll go to show and then where it says rulers, actually not. Whoops. I want to say I'll hide my guides. So I'll hide my guides. And now we have an image like that, just like that. So then we can go through, we could save it. We don't want it to save as a PSD. We want to save it as an actual image and so we'll go to JPEG and we'll say that this is underscore cropped so just in case we need to go back to it and we'll save it as the maximum so now that we have that we'll see our cropped image and then we'll see QB image which is the one that we scanned and so now time to set up unity so in this video, we'll learn how to install Unity Game Engine. We'll visit unity.com. We'll select new or returning user. We'll download the Unity Hub. Install the application on our computer. We'll also open it. Download the latest version of the Unity install. You'll probably need Visual Studio and maybe some iOS build support or Android build support for mobile AR. And then we'll select a folder for all the Unity projects and make sure that we have the right versions for all the projects. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to download and set up 
the Unity engine, which we'll be using for a lot of our augmented reality stuff and some of our gamification stuff. And so at first, you just go to unity.com. Once you have Unity set up on your web browser, you go to get started and then it will say business plans. Uh, you probably don't need one right now. Obviously, you're probably not a business and you're probably not making money in games. And so you could go to individual and then for individual, you could sign up as a student if you have a, a .edu or a, a student account, a student email address. Uh, but if not, you could do a personal account. We have our personal plan. And so again, it's free. And the eligibility is that as long as you're uh, making less than $100,000 uh, each month with game development and everything, uh, you could you know, pretty much play around with it and do all the development you want for free. And so go ahead, get started. And then from there, all you have to do is say, uh, for me, I'm a returning user. Uh, but if you're a first time user, you just click here and then you could go to agree and download. For me, I'm a returning user, so I go here and then I could download my Unity Hub. And if you download the Unity Hub, then it says, if you're not eligible, blah, blah. Yeah, you download the Unity Hub. And with that, I'll go into my folders and it's this thing right here. So you go ahead, double click it, install it. If you're on a Mac, it's a different situation to install it but go to agree, install, all that stuff. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do that. And then from there, you have the Unity Hub right here. You go ahead, click it. And once you click it, you need to go to installs. And after you have installs done, you go to add. You can see I have two different versions already. And we can go into that another time, but essentially uh, you'll notice I'll have 2.3.2 uh, is available. So I'll actually go ahead and restart now. I'll actually go ahead and restart. Then allow access and I have my unity hub up and so go ahead refresh it these are so the way it works is uh, when you come in you have all your projects and so these are all the projects that I'm working on in unity right now uh, so you have the project name it gives you the folder that it's in and it gives you the unity version and this is important because you want to make sure that you are using the right unity version for your apps and so when you go to Unity version, you could choose different ones. I have two. And so make sure that uh, with each, each one, you want to make sure that you have the, uh, either the exact one or a one higher. And so if this is uh, 3.7, that means that it won't work on 3.6. It could work on 3.8, but it won't work on 3.6. And so that's just one thing to pay attention to. With current platforms, target platforms, that's just like what device you're about to use it on. And so I have Android, I have iOS, I do most of my development in Android, so I wouldn't have to worry about that. And then uh, last modified, that's just, you know, I've worked on these over the course of the week or over the course of the month. And then if you want to show the actual project folders in the Explorer, you can do that. And so these are where my actual projects are. They actually live on a on in different hard drive space. And so that's the projects tab and the learn tab. These are all the beginner projects that you have. And so these teach you or walk you through how to, how to make games, how to make different apps, mainly games because Unity is a game engine. Uh, so these are like beginner projects that you could play around with. And then there's tutorials that you could take a look at that allow you to learn more and more about Unity and scripting and animation and all those different things. And so they're, they're really great. Then there's a community. This just shows you where all like the Unity forums and answers and, and helps and blogs and all that stuff is. Uh, I don't really use that that much. Uh, I probably should, but I just find that Google is really uh, much better for my workflow. 
and then installs you'll see i have two installs already but you can go to add and if you go to add you'll notice that there's uh, unity official releases so we have the beta releases or the pre-releases that they're still working on I would say shy away from those right now because you probably don't need to do use these for any of the stuff that we're talking about in the videos. But uh, you know, there's 2017, there's 2018. These are long-term releases. These are for like the evangelists. A lot of the augmented reality stuff is only available for 2019 because there's a lot of new stuff that has been updated with 2019. And so uh, I tend to go with the the latest official release unless I already have a release that I'm working on. And so with 2019.3, anything after 20.3.7, uh, 2019.3.7 is, uh, is really good for all the projects that we're doing. And so I'm working on 3.7 until so you could do 14 or 15 or uh, anything like that. Even if there's a 2019.4, you could do that as well. And so select it. It's ten, it tends to be the first one that's selected already. Uh, then you go to next and so and so this is where all the the important stuff is you want to make sure that your development tools are selected so you want to use visual studio uh, if you have community or if you don't have community i would suggest getting that i use visual studio code and we will go into that in some of my tutorials where it's a it it looks different but it pretty much does the same thing it's a code editor and so uh you know make sure you have visual studio in, installed then after that you want to make sure that uh, for all the mobile development stuff that we do, you want to have Android build support installed. And so you would want to select this and you want to make sure all of these are selected. Quite often, you can select one of them and then these won't be selected. So make sure you install all of this stuff because all this stuff is really important. If you're doing iPhone building, then you could have that selected. If you're doing any of the other stuff like uh, Magic Leap or HoloLens or any of those, then you want to make sure that you have like Windows build support selected or uh, documentations or uh, Mac or anything, you know, you just want to make sure all that stuff is selected. And then afterwards you click next and then it will start downloading all of those packages. And after they download all those packages, then it will uh, install in your computer and it will show up just like another box right here next to all of these. So one of the things you want to pay attention to is that when you have a whole bunch of installs it will take up a lot of space in your hard drive um if i go back to it and i select next notice how just just the bare basics with nothing on it that takes up five gigabytes and so if i add android support and ios support now i've taken up 17 gigabytes and so i have enough space but for computers that don't have enough space or don't have a lot of space to sort of give to these uh, each one of these are going to take up at least 15 gigabytes and so these two right here, already 30, 30 gigabytes. And so uh, something to pay attention to where I used to download the latest and then I would actually delete the, the more recent one. And so you go through an uninstall or you would uh, do all that. But if you want to add a module, so you could go through and you could add another module. So say I have uh, Android build support and I have iOS. So say I wanted to have Mac build support. Uh, I could add that by just clicking that. And then I, it will add to my uh, total space that I need for it. And then I'll click done and then it will download all that stuff. And so right now I will go ahead and create a new app. So I'll just go to download and we'll just say that this is a um, Unity tutorial. Uh, you want to make sure that you're clicking 3D. Uh, 2D is for 2D stuff, but since we're doing AR and 3D stuff, you want to make sure that's 3D. Uh, high definition render pipeline. This is for very high definition games or high definition animation. We don't have to worry about that because mobile development does not work in high definition. And universal project template, those are typically, you know, you, you're better off just using 3D. That's just what it comes down to. And then 3D with extras, I haven't really played around with that too much, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. And so you go ahead, create. And then we will have the Unity screen and we'll just set up our project. And so now we have Unity. 
uh, one of the things that you'll notice is that the layout is a little different for me um, and that's because I'm using a custom layout and so what I would do is I'll actually save my layout as we'll just say Stevens layout right there so I'll just click save boom and uh, you'll notice that it says Stevens layout right there so if I click default this is typically the layout that you will have and you have the projects right here so this is where all your project assets are and so say you have images or 3d models or scripts this is where they would go uh, you'll notice that we have a scene so the scene we're in a sample scene and in the hierarchy this shows you everything that's in your scene and so when we're building out our animated stuff if we're building out our augmented reality stuff all that stuff will be built in here and you will be able to see it right here and so we have our main camera we have our lights all that jazz so if I go ahead and uh, take a look over here, we have our inspector and the inspector is only used when we want to manipulate any of the objects in here in our scene. So if I click main camera, you'll notice that stuff appears in the inspector, you know, the camera, the transforms, all that stuff. And the same with my directional light. We have a lot of different stuff that is specific to this game object, and they will change. The game view is the view that we see with our through our screen. And so if we're playing a game, this is what we're going to see as we're playing the game. We're not going to see this. This is the behind the scenes. This is the actual uh, game view that we're going to be looking at. The asset store, the asset store is going to be your best friend. The asset store is where you get all your different assets. So say you bought something from the store, uh, you bought some models, you bought some effects, some scripts, you can add all that stuff from the Unity asset store to your game without having to download it and import it and all that stuff. You know, they make it really, really great to do this. And so one of the things that you need to do is look for the free assets that are available there's tons of free assets i think there's 5986 free assets uh look through all those things and see what stuff you could use in your game for example you could get some platform game stuff some sunnyland 3d models some basic motion you could do a whole bunch of stuff with this uh definitely you know i can't stress enough how how great these assets are And so we'll look at the user interface. And so with uh, with Unity, we have you know new scene. We could do open scene, add new project, all that. Uh, build settings. These are very crucial. So say if you want to build for an Android device, you have to click the Android device and then you switch platform, and then you'll be able to build for it. Same with iOS. Uh, then we have you know our grid snapping our preferences and so our preferences are really great and you know it allows us to set up different colors for different things servers uh you know just a just a whole bunch of stuff that uh that we won't get into and we probably won't need to get into but uh if something breaks or if something's bogging down your system it's probably because of your preferences and then assets this allows you to create assets whether it's an animation controller a folder a script uh, all those different things uh, game objects this allows you to create game objects within your actual scene and so cubes spheres capsules cylinders uh, even audio sources videos text all that uh, components these are components to add to your game objects and so whether it's a rigid body a video player a mesh, uh, you know, animation, augmented reality stuff. The, these things are the things that you would add to your game objects. And then when you come to window, you want to make sure that again, you could access the asset store, but you could also access the package manager. And one of the package managers is, is allowing you to actually look at the packages you could download. And so say you want to use the Vuforia engine, you could do that. If you want to do some of the XR stuff, you could do that. 
if you want to try AR Foundation, you could try that. You could do some ad stuff. There's just a lot of stuff you can do. And so if you go to the uh, advanced tab, you could actually show preview packages. And these are things that are up and coming. And so you'll notice how it says preview here. And these are the things that you should be looking out for because these are the, the best parts, the new, the new bells and whistles for all the augmented reality stuff and all the uh, user interface stuff and all the game development stuff that Unity has coming down the pipeline. And so we have stuff in your projects. And so if you have certain packages in your projects, uh, this is where you would go to find them. You'll notice that there's a check mark here. And that means that this one is up to date. And if there's a downward arrow, that means that you could download it. And so you could update these by going through, clicking it, and then saying, okay, I could update this to the latest version. If you want to remove it, you can as well. And then if we go to my assets, this is connected directly to your asset store. And so I have a whole bunch of assets because I do a lot of development. And so this probably won't be as long for you, but having a whole bunch of assets allows you to create a whole bunch of different things uh, with water simulation, with tune effects, with animals, all those things. I think I have a low poly animal set. I have a cute zoo pet set. I have cute pet set uh, with cats and horses and all that stuff. It, you know, the asset store is really great. And all I have to do is just download those things and then import them in. And so if I go in and I go to build settings, I can go to player settings and player settings allows me to set up all the stuff that I need to export my app and set up all the physics and all the different settings that my app will be running off of quality, all that. So if I wanted to add an icon for a specific app, I could add that here. If I want to change the name of the company and the name of the app, I could do that. If there's certain versions, I could do that as well. So with our scene, some of the things that we need to look at is how to navigate the scene. So I'm using a three button mouse and that means that I have sort of a scroll wheel in the center and then I have a left and right click. So with the left and with the left click, I can click around or I could click on an object and, and move it around with all these arrows. So if I click on the, actually I will create a, uh, I'll, I'll do that later. So I will click on this camera and then these arrows show up so I could click with my left mouse and move it around side up down forward and i could do the same thing with the light that's here side up down and forward if i use the right click i can actually right click and move around our actual viewer camera if i use the middle click i can pan it up and down and if you notice over here we could automatically go to these different perspectives so with this this is the x perspective so go along the x-axis by clicking that you know if i want to go along the z-axis i could do that i want to go the y-axis i could do that and so uh, these make it easy to navigate and it gives you the orientation so this is to the right this is to the back, this is to the left, this is on the top, this is on the bottom. So it really allows you to do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, for this, this is 2D mode, so you probably don't want to do this if you're not in 2D mode, which we won't be in. Um, and so over here we have the hand tool, and you can access this by pressing Q, and this just allows you to pan, much like the center mouse button then we have our move tool so you could access that with w and this allows you to move an object the rotation tool which is actually e and allows you to rotate 
the scale tool, which is actually R, and that allows you to make things bigger or smaller. The rec tool allows you to modify its topology. So modify a lot of the, uh, the form and shape of it. And I can get into that a little bit more with, uh, if I, when I add a square here, but, uh, but you could access that with a T and then the rest of the stuff, like the all objects thing, this one, you could pretty much do all the rotation pretty much combines all of these into one tool. I don't really like to use it and you could access that with Y because yeah, and you could access that with Y. So in our scene view, you could go ahead and you can right click and you could add an empty. And so an empty is just an empty game object. All that is is just a container. I tend to use these to make things organized. And so if I have a whole bunch of assets. So say I have like 20 different cubes. Some of them are blue, some of them are red. I can make multiple game objects. I could name this red and I could name this blue. And by naming these red and blue, I could use these as folders or containers to actually have all the different colors of squares or circles or whatever and put those in there and keep those organized. So this is just really to keep things organized and it makes navigating with a lot of assets a lot better. Go ahead, delete those. So with game objects, we have access to 3D cubes, 3D spheres, capsules, cylinders, planes, quads, you know, trees, terrain, the whole shebang. So if we add a cube in, you'll notice that uh, there's actual cube right here. And so if I actually rotate it around, you can see that there's a cube there. And because we have a light source, the light will actually change based on how it's oriented. Like that. And so again, we could rotate it. Do some rotations. We can move it. And we can scale it. And that works across the board for all of the different like spheres. Works across the board for capsules, cylinders, all types of stuff. And so one thing that you'll notice is that we can also control everything from the transform. So this is along the X, this is along the Y, which is up and down, and this is along the Z, which is forward and backwards. Uh, we can do the rotation as well. So rotation around the X, rotation around the Y, and rotation around the Z. Again, you, you can only work with these individually. Uh, and that's really crucial when it comes to the scale, because if you scale with one, you have to make sure that all the other ones are scaled to the exact same as well. So notice how these are all, it's all wonky now because the scale is off. And so if we move it back to, if we go to two, then the perspective is a lot better. But this is how you could navigate if you don't want to use these tools. And for the most part, this is all that you need to know right now. Um, another thing may be to, you know, this is, you can create new scenes by right clicking and going down to all the different new scenes. So a new scene will be right there. If you want to add a script, you can add it here. And if you want to add a folder to just keep yourself organized, you can do that as well. But other than that, that's pretty much all for how to use Unity. Again, we'll dive deep into this with the, a lot of the tutorials that we're doing. And so you'll get more familiar with it as you use Unity a lot more. Uh, for me, it took a little while to get used to it, get used to the interface. But now I know it like the back of my hand, at least for a lot of the stuff that I'm trying to do. And so with that, we'll call it from there. And let's move on to the next videos. In this video, we'll learn how to install Vuforia and learn a little bit about it. We'll go to developer.vuforia.com. 
We'll also download the SDKs for it. We'll register for an account if you need to, and we'll also get a development key. So one of the things that we need to know about is Vuforia. Vuforia is the AR engine that we're using. And it's a SDK that you can download and it pretty much works with Unity to bring about augmented reality. Uh, Vuforia is really great for image tracking. Vuforia is great for a lot of different things. And, uh, and that's mainly what we're going to be using for a lot of our augmented reality stuff. There's others out there like AR Foundation, AR Core, AR Kit. Uh, Vuforia actually utilizes AR Core and AR Kit because uh, AR Core is for Google, Android, and AR Kit is for uh, Apple and iOS. And they util it utilizes it so that you're able to uh, take advantage of these different technologies across multiple devices. And so with Vuforia, the great thing about it is that you could have one project that you're working on and you could build you could end up building it on an android device at the same time you wouldn't have to change much and that's really great because you can't control what devices your consumers or your the people around you are using but you can control how they are built and that experience and it's really great and so what we'll do is we'll go to vuforia.com and it will take you to the Vuforia site. And so this looks kind of crazy. Uh, it's made by a company called PTC. And what we can do is we can go to join developer program. So what we do is we go to developer.vuforia.com. And you'll see the first thing that shows up is that we're at Unity Engine 9.1 is available and has resolution on popular AR core devices, uh, add some more model stability and tracking. Uh, if we go to the home page, which this is, it, it just gives us a little bit more stuff on, on what we could expect. Uh, we can go to pricing. Uh, one of the things to pay attention to is that before you can, uh, they do have pricing available if you're starting to span, expand out. So for now, we don't have to worry about that. But if you're running a small business or for students and you're trying to develop apps for yourself and you're trying to put them on the app store, it's good to look into their pricing plans um, because they're different than Unity, but they allow you to develop uh, up until a point. And so when you start making money, then they're going to start knocking. But other than that, you know, we could play around with a whole bunch of different cool apps and they have different licenses and all that stuff that you could play around with. Um, in order to download the SDK, you can do so by uh, choosing either a Vuforia Engine for a Unity project, or if you're only doing uh, Android development, you use that for iOS. Right now, we're only going to use the Engine project for this, and there's a version of the package that is available in the resources for this project as well. And so you could go ahead and check that out if you would like, or you could download it from here. And so what you're going to need to do is you need to register. And so go ahead, register. If you aren't of age or you don't feel comfortable registering, I do have a development keys and all that stuff available. And so if you don't register, uh, it, it's not the end of the game. You know, if you're just trying to learn all that stuff. Uh, but if you like to, you know, have your own development key and everything, you can do so. Uh, once you click all that stuff, you create an account. For me, I already have an account, and so I'll go ahead and add to it. And so when you do that, it brings you up to your license manager, and this is in the develop tab. And so in order to get a development key, you can go ahead, just click get development key. You label the key. Uh, so say this will be testing device. And then I click the checkbox. It gives you, you know, you could do a uh, thousand downloads per month, all that stuff. And then, you, you know, you could click OK. Uh, right now I'm using my AR test feature key for a lot of my development. And then when you're ready to actually deploy an app, you can actually buy a key. And by buying that key, it allows you to do a whole bunch of different stuff. 
So target managers, this is where like the databases come into. Uh, we won't be using any of this stuff, and so I'm not going to go too deep into it. But just understanding how Vuforia works, uh, this is how you do cloud recognition, and this is how you do a database recognition for image targeting. Outside of that, you don't really have to worry about it. Um, so you could go to add database, and you could do uh, for a device, or you could do for the cloud, or you could do for uh, Vuforia, or for the Vumarks. And the Vumarks are just sort of like QR codes that are special to a uh, Vuforia. And so outside of that, that's pretty much all the stuff you need to know about with Vuforia. And, um, you know, for this, we'll mainly be using image targeting and ground planes. And with image targeting, we will be doing user or instant image targeting. So we don't won't actually be using a database. We'll be creating stuff and then downloading it directly into the app and working with those images. And so now that that is, now that we have covered Vuforia and the engine, uh, feel free to use the development key that we have and add those to your projects and download the packages, get those packages ready and kind of go from there. So we're going to set up our Unity game engine for our AR experience. So again, if you're familiar with the last video, we're going to open up the Unity Hub, set up a project by naming the project, using the 3D settings, and make sure to use it at 20.19.3 or above as a version of Unity. When we open up Unity, we're going to set up the build settings. We're going to switch the platform to iOS or Android. If you're building for an iOS device, like an iPhone or iPad, use a Mac computer to export that build and choose iOS in the build settings. One thing to note is you cannot build iOS apps to an Apple device from a PC, so you're going to need a Mac. But if you're only working on Android, just choose the Android platform in the build settings, and you could build Android apps from Macs or PCs. Be sure to switch your build settings before you begin the project because it will really, really save you some time. So we have the Unity Hub open right now. And so if you're not familiar with how the Unity Hub looks, make sure to check out one of the other videos that goes over Unity and how to install it in the Unity Hub. But once we have that, we'll open it and then we will go to New. So just select New. Right now I'm running 2019.3.7f1 and so if you're using any of the project files that I have, make sure that you're using at least 2019.3.7f1. You can use a later version but you can't use a version that came before this so you can't use 6 or 5 or 2019 or 2018 or 2017. And so with that I'll go ahead and name this AR drawing app and I'll click create and as that sets up we're just gonna have to wait a little bit and we open up our Unity. And so now that we got Unity open, one of the things we need to make sure that we have ready is before we start adding packages and before we start adding our images and stuff, we wanna make sure that we're using the right build settings. And so we'll go over to File, we'll go over to Build Settings, and the build settings menu will pop up 
right now it says working on PC Mac Linux standalone. I don't want to use that. And so uh, for me, I use a lot, I do a lot of app development with Android. You could also do iOS, but with Android, we'll go ahead and click Android and we'll go ahead and want to switch platform. Again, if you're using iOS, make sure you click iOS and switch platform. The only thing is that if you're working on a PC, you won't be able to develop an iOS app for uh, Apple devices on a PC. You can only build to a iOS device with a Mac. I have a MacBook. I don't do that for a lot of my development, but I use it specifically for iOS development and I have an iPhone as well as a development device. And so for this, I'll be focusing mostly on Android, but the process is exactly the same in Unity. And so don't think that you have to choose one or the other now. Quite frankly, I will do a lot of development in Android. And then when I'm ready to push out a build to iOS, I'll just go to iOS and I'll click switch platform. And so other than that, uh, things are things are about the same because uh, the platform you we will be using or the and the engine that we will be building our augmented reality stuff on is called Vuforia and it's cross-platform and so it pretty much works the exact same but if you're curious to know the differences uh, make sure to check out uh, some of my other videos on this that talk about the differences between uh, iOS and Android and AR kit and AR core and all those different things and so with that we will use Android and we'll click switch platform again you could use iOS and click switch platform as well and so it will be importing all its settings and the reason we're doing this right now is because we want to make sure that it doesn't take forever to import the settings and switch it over as we start adding more stuff to it it will cause it'll just take a it'll take forever and so we don't want to do that and so as you notice we have our little unity symbol right here uh, that means that we're actually on this setting and it says build and so if we wanted to go to switch platform we'd have to do that or if we wanted to go back to pc and mac we'd have to select switch platform in this video we're going to dive deeper into the vuforia sdk and how to use it for ar in our unity project we're going to import the Unity package from the resources or from the Vuforia website that you downloaded it from. We're just going to use import asset, Vuforia package, and then update. We're going to open the package manager and update the Vuforia package to the latest version because sometimes the latest version comes out after you downloaded that package. We're going to create a new folder for our scenes. We're going to make a new scene and name the scene and enter the scene uh, by double clicking it. Typically we'll have a sample scene so you just want to make sure it's not in the sample scene. You want to make your own new scene. We're going to create a new folder for our image. We're going to import the drawing image into that folder. We're going to select and change the texture type to 2D sprite type in the inspector. We're going to set up the license key by going to window, Vuforia configuration, and then you can copy and paste the license key from your license key section. And then we're gonna make sure to turn off track device pose because it doesn't necessarily work for image targeting. If we're using ground plane, that will work, but not for this. So now that we have that done, we will actually add our Vuforia package. And so on the resources, you should be able to find the Vuforia package as well as the QB image which we'll be using. Uh, if you have your own images, feel free to do so as well. Um, but, uh, and if you have your own uh, Vuforia account, you can use your own app license key and you can download your own packages. Uh, I provide them in the resources just so it makes it easier for you to access this stuff just in case you have problems. Um, but again, uh, treat this as sort of uh, practice and development. I do have a video that you can check out to follow how to set up your Vuforia stuff. So now that we have Unity set up for our Android development, we will go ahead and go to Assets, and then we're going to go to Import Package, and we're going to go to 
custom package. So after you do that, you click custom package. I will t go to my augmented reality, augmented drawing, and I'll go to my folder that has my uh, Buforia package and I'll click open. And then it will pop up with a screen that talks about these are the packages and stuff that you need. Uh, it's going to import the Buforia engine. And so I'll click import. Then it's going to say update. So I'll do that. And so now that we have that, you'll notice that in the packages, we have Vuforia Engine AR down in the packages. And if you go to Windows, you'll notice it says Vuforia Configuration. And if you really wanted to check, you could check in the Package Manager. And we could scroll down where it says Vuforia Engine AR. And notice how we could actually update this. And so I will go ahead and update that right now. So if you're using the package that I provided in the packages, uh, make sure to update it to the most recent Vuforia package. So we'll go to update and we'll just update to 1.7 or 9.1.7. Uh, if you're looking at this at a later date, then it might be further along. Uh, so it might be at 10 or it might be at 11 or it might be at 9.5. Uh, but at the current date, you know, this was published on March 18th. So we'll go ahead and we'll just click update. And so now that we have that, you'll notice how it has a check mark right there. Again, nothing should change uh, except for it's updated a little bit more. And you'll see that uh, Vuforia AR is right there. And so now that we have all that set up, what we are going to do is we are going to actually create a new folder. So we'll go to our assets. We'll minimize this because we don't want to touch the packages. If you touch that and you mess around with it, it might mess up the whole thing. And so uh, before we do that, we'll make sure to save. And so we'll go to save and then we'll also save our project. Um, not really sure what the difference is between save and save project is, but I always just try to make it have it. And so in this, we'll create a scene. We'll go into scenes and we'll right click and we'll go to create. We'll go to create scene and it says new scene right there. We will actually label it. We'll turn it into AR. drawing so we'll call it AR drawing I'll we'll just double click it to get out of our sample scene because uh, it always comes up with sample scenes but you want to make sure to double click it you know notice how it says AR drawing right here so if we were in the sample scene still it would still say sample scene so we'll double click and we'll go into our AR drawing one more thing that we want to do before we get started is we want to uh, create a new folder so create a new folder and we'll call that folder images. And then we will, uh, yeah, so that's what we'll do. And so one thing that we can do now is we can go into images. We have our, all of our stuff right here. And so we'll, we'll go ahead and use our QB image because I really like how that one looks. 
And I feel like I'll get the best results because it's so, uh, there's a lot of contrast. With this one, it's cropped. There's a few, you know, problems with it. Uh, it's wider, but I think the QB image might be the best way to go. And so what I'll do is I will actually just drag and drop and add that to the folder. And so you'll notice we have our QB image. We have the image that's QB. And so what we'll do is we'll click it and we want to go into our inspector, which I have right here. And instead of it saying default texture type, we're going to change it to 2D sprite right there. And once we finish that, we're going to draw, we're going to scroll all the way down and click apply. And notice how it changes it so that we have a arrow. And that is actually our uh, 2D image. And so now it's a 2D image UI, a 2D sprite and UI. And so with this, uh, when it says sprite, it means typically for uh, 2D stuff and for user interface stuff. And we can talk a little bit about the user interface stuff a little bit because we will be uh, making that stuff as well. So one last thing that we want to do is set up our license key. And so we'll go to window, we'll go to Buforia configuration, and you'll notice how we have a section for our license key, app license key right here. And so what we'll do is we will if you already have Vuforia set up with an account and everything, cool. You go into your Vuforia and you can set that up and I will show I show you in other videos. Uh, but with this, we have a Vuforia license key. You go ahead, double click it. And I have a development license key that I use for all of my teaching courses. And so this allows me to actually do some of the features that Vuforia has. So I will actually copy and I will paste it right here. And if you needed to actually add a license key, you could just click this button and it will take you to a license key button. And so one, one other thing that I want to do is make sure that I turn off track device pose. If I turn off track device pose, it will disable some of the functions that are needed for uh, the ground plane, but we won't be using the ground plane. We'll actually be using image targeting. Uh, and image targeting doesn't necessarily work well with uh, ground plane optimized functions. So outside of that, uh, we'll keep everything the same uh, and we will move on. So now that we have Unity set up and we have Vuforia in our project, it's time to set up our AR workflow. And this is crucial to begin with because this is going to be the foundation for your AR experience. So we're going to set up your scene to build our AR experience. First, we're going to add an AR camera. And all you need to do is just right click the hierarchy, select Vuforia engine, and then select AR camera. Delete the main camera in the scene. Add an image target by right clicking the hierarchy select Vuforia engine and then select image target. We're going to set the type of the image target to from image in the image target inspector. Then we're going to select the drawing image from the image selection box. Make sure that the image that you have for the drawing is a 2D sprite, otherwise it won't show up. Then we're going to set the dimensions in the advanced tab and make sure that it's in meters. And so if it's eight and a half by 11, that's in inches, find a way to convert it to meters. It's typically going to be a lot smaller. And finally, we're going to add a 3D cube. We're going to make that a child of the image target game object. So in this video, we'll be talking about how to set up our augmented reality workflow. And so again, we want to make sure that we are in AR drawing. That's our scene. If you want to delete the sample scene, you can. I tend to not want to do that, but uh, that's just a personal preference for me. And then from there, what we're going to do is we're actually going to start working in our scene. And so give yourself a, a good space in the scene view. I tend to have my game view off to the side. I work with a lot of animation. So the animator and the timeline are always there and the hierarchy is always something that I uh, need to make sure to have full access to. So I tend to have it in the center.
but you could always change your layouts if you like. And I'll actually right click, I'll go to Vuforia Engine, and I'll add a AR camera. So when I do that, you'll notice that a game object appears and that we have an AR camera. So looking at the AR camera, we have it, we have a tag of a main camera, and we have some other stuff like the device, the target eye, all those things. We won't really need to worry about that right now, but I could go on into this stuff a little bit further if uh, if need be but for the most part you just need to know that we have an AR camera so one thing that you need to make sure to do before you move on is you need to get rid of the main camera because you don't want to have a main camera and an AR camera so what we'll do is we will get rid of the main camera by just right clicking and delete and now we have our main camera gone and since we have a tag of main camera here this is going to act as our main camera now and so this is actually the device camera that we will be using for augmented reality stuff. It gets really interesting when uh, we start deploying builds, but uh, yeah, we'll be using our AR camera. Next thing that we need to do is we need to add an image target. And so in order to add an image target, we just right click, we go to Euphoria Engine, and we do image target. And Vuforia has a lot of interesting things that you're able to do with image targeting. One of the things is that you can use your own images to essentially call upon them for augmented reality stuff. And so you'll notice that when we have image target behavior script, we have our type. And so we could use a database, which are images that you upload to the Vuforia database that recognizes them and then it allows you to call on those images from a downloadable, downloadable database. And we go over that in, a, in another video. Or you could have user-defined images, which are images that you define upon runtime. And so instead of us making our drawing and then scanning them in, you could actually make that drawing and then not scan it in. And then when you have a phone, when you have an app build ready, you can use the user defined to scan it on your phone in real time through the app rather than through unity and then cloud rico is if you have a database of images that you upload onto a cloud service like the vuforia cloud service and so you don't have to go through the process of creating a whole bunch of images and uploading them into the app you can upload them to a cloud service and then through the internet you can call upon those apps or call upon those images. And so with this, we're just going to use from image. And uh, and then the next thing we're going to do is click select. And then we're going to go to QB image. So double click that. And then one of the big things you need to pay attention to is an advanced. We'll click advanced. And you want to make sure that the height and everything is the right way. And so the width and the height are going to be in meters. Make sure you understand that because if I were to click five by seven, that would be five by seven meters. And that's a very, very big image. We don't want that. And so this would be about 0.12 to 0.2. I would say, yeah. And so with that, we can uh, double click our target image. We'll just double click that and we'll click F. Uh, I guess that didn't work. I guess we'll just uh, scroll into the image right there. And I like to uh, press Alt and just rotate that image around. And so I'd like to have a better image. So now that I look at it, I'm able to zoom out. If you want to get rid of this camera icon, you go to Gizmos and you just select Gizmos and it gets rid of it. If you want to bring it back, you just select Gizmos as well. Get rid of it just by selecting it again. And so use the navigation buttons and you could make it a little bit easier, just like that. So now we're going to add a 3D object to our image target. We're going to do that by adding a 3D cube to the image target by right clicking image target in the hierarchy. We're going to select 3D object, then we're going to select cube. Once we have the cube, 
we're going to scale the cube down to 0 0.08 and that's going to be in meters and so 0 0.08 will actually be to scale that we actually want next we're going to raise the cube up to half of its size so because it's 0 0.08 half of 0 0.08 is 0 0.04 and we're going to raise it up by 0 0.04 and you'll see why once we begin the project. So with the image target, all this is going to be is our ground plane. This is something that we're referencing. So when you use this in the app, the app is going to recognize this image and it's going to call upon whatever 3D structures we are instantiating are putting on top of this. And so it's not actually going to show this. It's going to show the 3D stuff on this. And so in order to do that, first you want to make sure that you're saving it, saving and saving the project. The second thing is you're going to right click and because it's cubey, we're just going to add a cube. And so we're going to right click, we're going to add a 3D object called cube, and we're just going to put the cube there. And so when we zoom out, notice it's huge. And so all we're going to do is we're going to scale it down. So scale it down, scale it down, scale it down so that it's not that big like that. So I'll go to a different perspective and I will actually lift this up so that it is sitting on top of it. And so as you can see, we have a cube sitting on top of our thing. And so with that, I'll go ahead and save and save the project. Now that we have our base for our AR experience, it's time to test our app. And so first we're going to set the aspect ratio to the proper size in our game view because we want to make sure it matches the screen size on our device. Then we're going to select play to test out the AR. So if you have your webcam, all you have to do is just place your camera over the image that you drew and the AR should appear. And so now that we have that, we can actually test out how we're doing with our augmented reality. And so I'll go over and before I test it out, I want to make sure that I have my aspect ratio. And so I tend to do 1920 by 1080. You could change it to a whole bunch of different things, but I like to have 1920 by 1080. I will just make this a little larger right here. And I, when I click play, I should have an option to see if my augmented reality is working right now. And so I'll go ahead and click play. And then you should be able to see me. Hello, hello, hello. I will take this and I will shine it over my drawing. And what do you know? We have QB, our actual drawing, and it is, it has a cube on it. And you'll notice that in the scene view, we have, every time we move the cube or move our camera, we're able to look at the cube. It's crazy, look at that, look at that. We have our augmented reality, I can rotate it around. It notices all the stuff that we wanted to notice. And so I'll go ahead, click play again. And so far that was a success. And so now that we have our cube, we are able to, we created a image and after we created the image, we added the cube to it and we were actually able to instantiate that. And all instantiate means is just making it appear. Uh, that's all it means. Uh, it's kind of buzzword, sounds pretty fancy and all that. But all it is saying is that uh, if there's a 3D model or a 3D object or a game object, it's just going to appear. And so that's what instantiate means. And so again, we will save it. We will save the project. And now time to add some 
some nice bells and whistles to this, because this should be fun. Now we're going to make the UI for the app. We're first going to start by adding a canvas and some panels. And that's just as simple as right clicking in the hierarchy, selecting UI, and then selecting canvas and panel. We're going to set some canvas scalers to scale with the screen. We're going to set the reference resolution to 1920 by 1080. We're also going to set the panels to the bottom of the screen. Set the alpha color to opaque gray. Set the center anchor to the bottom. Add some sliders for rotation and scale. And then we're going to add some text to label the sliders. Okay, so now that we have our cube, I'm actually make this smaller again, give myself a little bit more room to work with. So now that we have our cube working on our image that we drew, the next thing that we want to do is we want to add some functionality to it. Because what's the point of having augmented reality with 3D models if you can't play with it, right? And so we're going to add a function to make the cube rotate. And so in order to do that, we're going to need some, we're going to need to use some code, but a lot of it is drag and drop. But before that, what we're actually going to do is create the actual user interface for it. And so we'll create the user interface so when the user shines the phone over the screen, uh, buttons are going to pop up for you to actually uh, interact with it. And so we'll do that by first right clicking and we're going to go to UI and we're going to go to Canvas. And this is the only way that you can have UI buttons in Unity is by first creating a canvas. And so we could actually close that, shrink it, so we don't get confused, because I often get confused. And uh, it comes with the event system. And so what I do is I'll right click, not right click, but so after we right click, we have our canvas, and then we'll right click under that, and we will have a panel, like so. And in the canvas, we'll change the canvas to uh, scale with screen. And we'll change that to 1920 by 1080. And we'll add our gizmos back on so that we could actually see our canvas. And you'll notice we have a canvas there. And so what we can do is we can match it. So I tend to match it at about 0.5. So 0.5 right there to be safe. And so that's the height and everything. So 1920 by 1080 uh, scale with screen. So just in case you have multiple screen sizes, often I forget that. And so uh, I want to make sure that because uh, different devices have different screen sizes. And so you just want to make sure that you are able to scale with the screen. With it, we added a panel. So we'll have that panel and I will actually drop this panel down. So we'll click this uh, rec tool, the rec tool allows us to uh, do some modifications. And so I'll bring the rec tool down like so, and I will actually make the panel, we'll go over to the color section right here for the panel, go to the color, and you'll notice how there's this black bar here. That just means that all the white up into here, this is what the opacity is. So we'll actually double click that, and we'll go over here to where it says A is 100, this is the alpha. And so alpha is just the opacity. So the closer it is to zero, the more transparent it is. And you'll see it over here in the game view, uh, which is the view that we see on our screen uh, on our phone. And I will actually turn it to 255. You don't want it to turn it to 100 because it's not, uh, the values don't go up to 100, they go up to 255. And so if you go to 100, it still has some transparency. So I'll go all the way to 255. And I will actually give it a grayish color. Yeah, a grayish color will work. And so after that, we have our lovely little panel right here. And so again, with the panel, I will actually press Shift and Alt. And this will allow me to 
sort of anchor it down at the bottom. Shift and Alt will anchor it to the bottom when I go to this right here. So I'll click that, I'll press Shift, Alt, and you'll notice how it changes. And then we'll have this center anchor, and this center anchor is exactly what we're looking for. So we'll click that, and it'll go from side to side. So depending on, it doesn't matter what device you have or that a user is using, this will always uh, go from side to side on their screen. And that's exactly what we want. And so from there, we have our base for our UI. We'll go ahead, save it, and save the project. And again, you can reference it over here in the game view, just in case you want to make sure that everything is looking good. And so now that we have our base, our panel, we want to add some sliders. So we want to add a slider for our rotation, and we want to add a slider for our scaling. So we'll actually right click on panel, we'll go to UI, and we'll go to slider. And with it, if we double click, uh, and notice uh, if I double click on something, it will allow me to zoom in on it. And so when I double click, I see that's very small. So what I'll do is I will actually do the scale tool and I'll scale it as big as I can get it. But understand that I need to have room for another slider. And so then I'll move it down and move it to the side. And again, make sure to use this area right here to see if you have room. And so one of the things you need to pay attention to is uh, because the slider is inside the panel, uh, when we come over here, it is, is centered, which you'll see with this sort of clover. So it is centered on that. And so if I click center or click shift and alt and I click that, it will recenter it. If I click shift and alt and press to the right, it will move to the right. And if I move to the left, move to the left, left corner, right corner, so on and so forth, right? If I wanted to scan across, you can do that as well. But what we're doing is just a center, and I will actually undo that, because I do not want it to be that big. And we will recenter. Hmm. I'll undo all of that. So, uh, so again, it all should be it all should be set up already, but just in case you didn't know. And so I'll actually move this around, make that available, and I'll call this I'll call this scale slider. So now that I have that, I will press Control and D, or you could do right click, duplicate. It says scale slider one. We'll actually do this rotation slider like that. Now that we have a rotation slider, we can actually lift this up. Or better yet, because it's at the bottom, I will actually lift the scale slider up. And that one will be the one at the one at the top. Last thing that we can do is we can click scale slider and we're going to right click go to UI we'll go to text and now we have text so we can move the text over we could go into the text settings in the inspector I'd like to have the text go to the side so it'll be right aligned and it'll be in the center and then I will use the rec tool to sort of butt it up against the edge of the slider. Make it a little bit smaller. Increase the text size a little bit. And again, keep it at rich text. And also best fit. I guess best fit always works. And then we're going to change this to scale. So I have my scale. And then I'll actually duplicate this, drop that right there. You'll notice how 
the scale is still there it doesn't actually move up against the side of this so what we'll do is we'll just click zero and it drops it down so we don't have to change anything else because we already uh, duplicated it but we could click rotate and we could label it rotate and so now we have scale and rotate right there and so the rotation slider that text is for rotate and then for the scale slider we have scale slider and so all this stuff should be aligned and this is our user interface so again we'll go ahead and save it and for the most part this is our user interface so all we're going to do now is we're going to go to our cube what you see and we we're going to start adding some adding some bells and whistles to it so it should, this is where the interesting part goes. The challenge for this section is sprucing up your UI design. So feel free to play around with colors and custom icons. Maybe add a full screen overlay or add an image to the slider buttons. Turn the boring into the awesome. And make sure to post your UI to the project section so that we all can take a look. Now this section is where it all begins. So this is where we're going to learn how to code. So first we're going to create a C-sharp script to add some scale to our AR content. We're going to start by creating a new folder and calling it scripts. We're going to create a C-sharp script and call it a scale slider. And that's going to be to scale or slider. We're going to open the input script. We're going to open the script to input the code. And you can feel free to copy and paste the code from the resources. If you want to make the code yourself, we'll first add code using the namespace, using unity.ui. We're going to add three spaces under the public class. And within those three spaces, we're going to add a public, slider, and then slider scaler. And again, you want to make sure that the capital letters are exactly how they are. And then we're going to add code under the void update section and it's just going to be a transform.local scale and then it's going to equal new vector 3 and then we're going to add slider scale values for all three of those last but not least we're just going to save our code okay so in this video i will be talking about how to make the scale and rotate actually work on your cube First, we need to do the scripts so that we actually have those functions. So what we see is that we're in our game view. And so all we're going to do is first, we need to make sure that we stay organized. So make sure that you click assets so that you see uh, all the folders for assets. And then you're going to click create, right click. You're going to click right click, create and folder. After you do that, we'll just name it scripts. Technically, you can name it anything you want, but I like to name it scripts so that I know that there's actually scripts in it. And so we'll go ahead and double click that. And then from there, we're going to right click, go to create. And we're going to go down to create our C sharp script. So the C with the pound sign and then script, that's C sharp. And we'll call this scale slider and so when you're naming your scripts you always want to make sure it's one word and what i like to do is i'll have the first letter of each word capitalized and if i do that then i'm able to uh, distinguish which words are in it uh, but you want to make sure that's one word and again you want to make sure that you name it right the first time because if you don't you're going to have to redo it because it messes up the script and so we'll Call it slider script and we'll name it right the first time and then we will double click it and now that we double clicked it we open it up and i'm using visual studio code you might be using regular visual studio i wouldn't worry too much about it they all do the same thing uh, i just like this one better because it it has a cool interface and cool colors and so one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to 
look at our namespace. So in our namespaces, which is this area right here, we want to add a new namespace. And so what we're going to do is we're going to type in using Unity Engine, and then we'll do period, we'll do UI, and then we're going to have a semicolon. And so what this means is that because we're using the slider UI, if you, if you recall, we did right click and we went to UI, and we did slider. We actually need to use the Unity UI, uh, essentially library that uh, is in Unity. And so in order to do that, you actually have to call upon it specifically with the namespace. And so all this does is say that, okay, uh, with this script, we're probably gonna be using the UI elements in Unity. Because there's like hundreds of different things and in order for you to, in order for Unity to process that, you have to uh, call it directly. So from there, you'll notice how it says public class, and this is the exact name as the script that we have. And so if you misspelled it, and then this would be a different name, and this would be a different name. And you don't want that because it's going to mess it up. And we could go through, um, I, I think I have other videos talking about how C Sharp is structured and laid out. We're not going to go over that because we don't really need to know, uh, because we're only doing one line of code for this. And that's the best part about it is that it's only one line of code and it gives us a, a lot of great functionality. And so with that, we are using the scale slider and we're gonna do that in the void update. The reason we're doing the void update is because it refreshes once per frame. And so normally this is running at about 24 to 30 frames per second, maybe 60 frames per second, probably doesn't need to, but maybe 60 frames per second. So every frame this is gonna update. Whereas in the start, it only updates once and it updates at the beginning. And so if we put it in the start, we would lose all our functionality. Because it's in the update, it's constantly calling for this uh, to see if there were any updates. And so that's how we're able to see things in real time uh, because we are adding a value and then that value changes. And so with it, we're going to go up to the top I like to do three plus signs. Again, we're gonna go up to the top, right under public class. And I like to press enter three times so that I have a little bit of space at the top and the bottom. And what we'll add is public. And then we'll do capital S, L-I-D-E-R. Whoops, I don't want that. Slider. And then I want lowercase l i'll do lowercase s l i d e r and then i'll actually uppercase the next s a l e and then i'll do a semicolon and again you want to make sure that every line of code that you do you want to make sure to have a semicolon on it because that tells when to stop and that allows you to not have errors in your code because that often happens, especially for me. And so we're using public because we want to be able to access this as a public variable. And so this public variable is something that we're going to utilize very explicitly in our code in order to get the functions. And then the slider, that's just saying that we're using the slider. And then this is, we're going to call this slider scale. And so slider scale allows me to uh, reference this for our slider which is accessible as public. And so from there, I will go down to void update. The first thing we're going to do is use transform. And we're going to use dot local, not locale, but local, lowercase, and then capital S C A L E. We're going to use an equal sign and then new vector three. And then we're going to use quotation marks, not quotation marks. Then we're going to use parentheses and then we're going to say slider scale, which is what we're referencing right here. So slider scale.
the dot value, which is the value that we have for that specific uh, variable. Then we're going to use slider scale again, dot value, and then slider scale again, dot value. And then outside of the parentheses, we have a semicolon. So all this means, and I'll make this a little bit bigger so that we can actually see it. So all this means is that uh, when this is modified, it's going to be modified in the transform scale position, which is just scaling. And we're going to do a new vector three, which means that there's going to be a new value for the X, Y, and Z axes. There's going to be a new variable or a new value for the X, Y, and Z axes. And that's going to be updated in real time. And so because we have a slider scale value in the X, the Y, and the Z, and they're all the same thing, it's going to scale in all those different directions at the same time. So if I only had a scale in the in the Y direction, I would have a zero here and a zero here, and it would only scale in the, the Y direction. But we don't want that. We want it to scale in all directions. And so new vector three would just be, you know, it's going to be a new X, Y, and Z. Uh, based on the transform. So from that, we're going to click save. And that is our first code. In this video, we're going to learn another C sharp script, but this one is to rotate our AR content. And so like the last one, we're going to create a C sharp script. We're going to call it rotation slider. And we're going to add that to the rotate slider. We're going to open the script and input the code. You can feel free to copy and paste the code from the resources or you can write it out. If you write it out, we'll add the namespace using unityengine.ui. Don't forget that semicolon. Then we're gonna add three spaces under the public class. We're gonna add public slider with the capital S and then rotation slider with the lowercase r and a capital S. And then we're gonna add the code under the update method and it's going to be transform dot local Euler angles where the E and the A are capitalized. And that's going to equal new vector three in parentheses zero comma rotation slider value comma zero. And then we're going to finish that with a close parentheses and a semicolon. Now, after you're done with that code, you're just going to save it. So the next code that we're going to do is our rotation slider. And so we're gonna do the exact same thing as we did for the scale slider, except we're gonna do it for a rotation. So there's gonna be some slight modifications, but this one should go by a little bit quicker. So again, we will right click, create new C sharp script, and we'll go rotation slider. Again, you wanna make sure that you label it the right way first, before you try to open it. If you mess up with any spelling or anything, just delete it and start over again. Again, we're gonna double click and we're going to open up our script in Visual Studio. So much like the scale slider script, we're going to go using unity engine.ui and semicolon, boom. And then we're gonna go down under public. I always like to add three enter spaces and I will go to the center one. I'll go public slider again because we're still using the slider and it always wants to do that. We're using a slider and then I'll call this rotation all lowercase rotation and then uppercase S L I D E R. And then we'll go to our void update which is going to update every single frame we're going to go transform dot local and this is where it gets different where it's local Euler angle so E U L E R A N G L E S Euler angles 
we're going to go equal and then again new vector 3 then we're going to have our parentheses and so this is where we are only going to be rotating in one direction and so like the scale I mentioned that when we're scaling we can scale in all different directions but when we're scaling we want to make sure that all the directions are scaling at the same time so that we have a good proportion in our scaling but with this one we only want to rotate around one axis and that one axis is the vertical axis and that vertical axis is actually the y-axis so we have our x-axis which goes left and right or side to side we have our z-axis which goes forward and back and then we have our y-axis which goes up and down and we want to rotate around the up and down axis and so with that we'll go zero for the x-axis because we don't want to rotate there we'll go rotation slider dot value because that's the value that we want so rotation slider value for that one and then we want zero in the z and then from there we have our semicolon so we'll go ahead and we will save it and that is our second script that is all the scripting that we need and so once we're done with that go ahead go back to our scripts and you could always check the console to see if there is any bugs if there were any bugs it, they would show up as either as red but we don't have any bugs because we are doing good with our scripts so that's great and so now we'll go ahead save our project save our project and save now that we have our code it's time to add the scripts to the sliders and test our ui so what we're going to do is we're going to create an empty game object. We're going to set that as the container for our 3D object and our sliders. Now what we're going to do is just right click it under the image target and select create empty. We're going to name it, whatever name you want. Place the cube in the empty container. Then we're going to drag the slider scripts onto the empty container in the inspector. After you do that, we'll add the scale slider and the rotation slider game objects into the reference area of those slider scripts. Then we'll make sure to change the default slider values. So for the rotation slider, make sure the minimum value is zero and the maximum value is 360 because that's for degrees. For the scale slider, the minimum value will be 0 0.4 and the maximum value will be three. Feel free to play around with the scale of those if you would like. And then after that, we're just going to save our project. Okay, so now that we have our scripts done, time to put everything together. We're almost there, almost there. And so what we're first going to do is now that we have a rotation and our slider script, we have our text, we have our slider, we will go to our image target and one of the things that I often do is I don't try to put scripts or anything on the actual 3d models what I'll do is I'll actually create a container and I'll put the scripts on there and by putting the scripts on the container I'm actually able to manipulate the models a little bit better makes things a little bit easier because when you actually have 3d models that have animation on it and all those things it gets really dicey and so what I'll do is I'll go right click on the image target I'll go to create empty and I'll just call this uh, 3d container just like that 3d container and I will put that on the 3d container there we go and so when we look at the inspector we look at the cube We'll actually do zero that out. Uh, actually, no, don't want to do that. Keep everything exactly how it is and uh, just make sure this is zero, zero. And then we will actually go and drag the rotation slider script up, add that, and then go to drag our slider script up. So you'll notice some interesting things. So our rotation slider there. So it says none for the slider and for the scale slider it says none for the slider 
those are the public variables. And so if we go back into the rotation script, because it says public here, that is why we're able to see that rotation slider. And so all we have to do is go to where our rotation slider is, which is this one. And if you turn it off and on, or I'll look back up. So if you turn it off and on, this is our rotation slider. We'll go to our 3D container. We'll just move the rotation slider, drag and drop. And now we have a rotation slider. We'll do the same thing with our scale slider. So drag and drop, and we have our scale slider set up. And so now we have all the components done that we need for it. We'll go ahead, save it, save the project. So before we could actually get the sliders and everything set up, we need to make sure that we change the variables for all the sliders. And so we'll go to the rotation slider and normally we have our values from three, zero to 360. So with our rotation slider, we will actually change it to 360 as the max value and we'll have it at whole numbers. And so we can go to 360 or we could go to zero. We'll just keep that at left to right. Then with the slider, this is where it gets real interesting. So we want to have it at want to make sure it's at one right now and we could bring it up to about five. Uh, let, let's say, let's say we want it at point four. Okay. So we could go from point four all the way to five. That's pretty big. So, so we might say, we'll say three. Okay. So point four to three. We'll just say, this stays at one, like so. And so now that we have our slider scales and everything, these are the values that the script is gonna be calling upon. And so when it says uh, for the rotation, uh, we're looking at the value of this, that's going to be the slider rotation. And so because it starts at zero, we'll say it starts at 115 degrees. So that will be the value that shows up this right here. For scale, it would be a little different. Uh, with scale, because it's going from 0.4 to 3, we're starting at 1, so all the values for the slider scale would be at 1. Okay, so before we get everything set up, we will go ahead and make sure that the scripts are actually on, and then we'll save, save the project. So make sure that the scripts are on, and you see that by this checkbox. I accidentally had them off and then make sure that the cube is under this 3d container because if it doesn't if it's not under it then it won't see any of the slider scripts and after that we'll go ahead click play we'll get our camera shine it over our image like so it'll show up and then we can play around with the scale as you can see, it gets big and small and rotates. So I actually make it bigger and big and small with the scale and then rotate it with the rotation slider, just like that. And so now if we look away or you could see or you can see the image here. So we look over here, big and small with the scale, and lovely rotation. In this video, we're going to learn how to add animation to our AR content. And so we're first going to add a timeline by just going to Windows and Sequencing and then Timeline. We're going to select our cube in the hierarchy and we're going to create a timeline on it. We're going to name it. Then we're going to lock the timeline by making sure to hit that lock button at the top right corner. And on that timeline, we're just going to select that record button. And this is where it gets really fun. We're going to move the model and add our first keyframe using the transform tools. Then we're going to go to the last keyframe and we're going to place that same keyframe on it. And that's just going to be on the timeline. 
And then the other keyframes you can position on the timeline and create movement using the transform tools. You could add rotation, you could add movement on the Z axis, X axis, or Y axis, and you just have fun with it. And when you're done, you select that record button again, and we stop recording the animation. And so one of the final things that we can do when we're talking about adding features to an app, I like to approach this from a creator's perspective. A creator, you know, we're, we're talking about using art and using augmented reality and using technology. And so how can you be creative with augmented reality and add extra features that make the experience more interactive, more engaging? Uh, one of the things is adding animation. And so we have user controls already. So the last thing that we could do is add some simple animation. And Unity does really, really well with simple animation tools. And so I'll tell you about this. First thing that we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we have access to our timeline. And so what we can do is we can go to window, we go to sequencing and we select timeline. And we will actually go to the timeline and we can click on the 3D cube and from the 3D cube, we could go through and click create. So when we click create, it allows us to create a, a cube timeline and we'll go ahead and do that. And you'll see we created a timeline called tube timeline, called cube timeline. And so from there, we don't need to, this to be that big. We could scoot this down a little bit more. And when we create a timeline, it will create a, in the cube 3D model, it creates a animator. And that animator right here allows us to animate our object. And so what I'll do is I will actually lock that. And so if we click out of it, it doesn't go away. And so from there, we want to make sure that we have well, I think we I think we're good right now. I think we're good. I believe we're good. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually animate some stuff. So I'll give myself a little bit of a little bit more wiggle room. Uh, zoom out a little bit. And so the way this works is this works on a timeline. If anybody's familiar with uh, animation. And so all we will do is we have our cube selected and we have the cube animator and so with this uh, so the next thing that we want to do is with our cube animation track we want to essentially start the animation first and so this is how we're going to be recording live so we'll go ahead and click the record button and it will say recording we want to make sure that we have our cube here We're going to select it and then the first thing that we'll do is we will just put hit zero and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually do a little bit of do a little bit of motion so we'll just move it to the side and then we will click zero just so we set an anchor point right there and what we'll do is we'll go to about 360 frame 360 and we can add a just another we just add another keyframe and so what we could say is go to the side whoops go to 360 We could click zero or you go to the side and then we click zero so we have our start and our end position so with animation we want to have our start position and our end position so now that we have that we'll go to frame so let's we'll say frame 90 and we will move this to the side you notice it creates another keyframe then we'll say uh, we'll go to frame 110, we'll go 
up. And we'll go, yeah, we'll go, we'll go about, we'll go about there. And then at frame, yeah, about 300, we'll have it go to the side. And we could always change these when we're done recording. But essentially, this is our animation. Starting goes to the side, up, down, and then back up, just like that. So now that we have our animation, we'll go ahead and just click that to stop it. And if you wanted to modify any of it, you go through, double click, and after you double click, you're able to change any of the keyframes. So if we wanted to move the keyframes forward like that, wanted to move these keyframes over to the side a little bit more, space them out, give it a little more breathing room, we could do that. And then uh, we close it and notice how it updated. So if we wanted to actually move the keyframes out a little bit more, we could do that. Like so. And now, there we go. So the next thing that we can do is we could actually apply transforms to offset, blah, 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 blah. All that should be good. Yeah, all that should be good. And so actually, I'm going to delete this and to we'll actually delete this. So when we click play, it goes to the side, up, down, and back to the other side. Perfect, just like that. I like it. The challenge for this section is have fun with that animation. See how complex you can make that animation. Explore the transform tools and the timeline to make a one of a kind animated asset for your 3D model. It can be as crazy or as wild as you would like. Even play with the scale, because that should be really, really interesting. And then post your animation to the project section so we could all take a look. In this section, we're going to add some UI controls to the animation so that we could have fun with it. We're going to first start by adding the UI button to the canvas. You just right click in that panel, selecting UI, and then select a button. Position it in the perfect area for you. And then we're going to name it. Then we're going to format that button to make sure it's interactable. Because if it's not, it doesn't matter if we have a button or not, if we can't use it. We're going to give it some color when it's pressed. And we could do that in the button section of the inspector. And then on the cube, on the cube, we'll disable the play on awake so that when we set up the AR experience, it doesn't start the animation. And that's in the play director. On the button, we'll select the plus sign on the on click section. We'll drag the cube to the button on click area. And then in that function drop down menu, we're going to go to playable director and then we're going to select play. And it should have parentheses around it. And that's all we need. So the next thing that we will do is we will add a UI button. And so in order to add a UI button, again, we'll go back to our canvas and we'll just add a UI button down here. So again, we'll go to click panel. We will right click UI, we'll add a button and then we'll just move that up. So it's kind of small. So we will go ahead and make it much bigger and you can see how big it is on the side but we'll make it big and now that we have it big we will go into the button and we're going to the text and we'll call this play just like that call it play something simple so one thing about the button is that you can add a little bit of reactivity to it, which is great. So with the color tint, 
we will make sure that it's interactable, which it should be by default. And when we have it pressed, we'll say that we want it to be like a pink or whatever. And so when it's pressed, it will turn red or pink. And so we'll go ahead and save it. Uh, when we click play, I'm not going to test any of the AR functions. We just want to click that it plays. And then we'll click OK from there. So now that we have that set up, now it's time to pair our cube button and our animation. So we'll need to go to cube. We'll need to say on awake, we don't want it to play. So we'll click that off. Uh, but we want it to play the timeline. And we want to press play on the timeline once. So we'll go to our button. Once we click our button, if I can lower the timeline a little bit, give us more room to see things. Do, 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 do. There you go. Uh, so when we have our button, we'll click button and then we'll scroll down to on click and we'll click a plus. So with the on click, we'll take our cube. You don't want to click it because it goes away from it, but you want to click and hold so that it holds. Don't release the hold. And we're going to just drag it over to where it says none. And so now in the no function, we could go down to animator and we could go to play. And we want to click start playback right there click start playback so we'll click start playback and notice how it's pretty much play the timeline essentially so we don't want it to play we just want the animator to start playback or actually no so I actually made a mistake so one of the things that we so once we click, once we move the button over, we have our cube button. So we're going to go down and even though we have animator, there's nothing in the animator. There's no animator controller. We're actually going based off of the playable director, which is the cube timeline and timeline asset, because that's where our animation is. And so what we're going to do is if you're not familiar, you go ahead, click play and it plays based off of the play director not any of the animation and it'll play once which it should so from there if we wanted to play it again we just go ahead and click play it does that and we're pretty familiar with the animation so on the button we have the cube animator we want to make sure to go to the play director and then we want to go to play right here so we'll click play It'll be playable director dot play, which should be this right here. And so we'll go ahead and test it. We'll just get, click save, save project. And so if we click the play button, that should play right there. It'll play once and they'll go back. So now that we've tested that now let's try that in real time so we should have it there and then when i click play what do you know it goes up down and around so how about we rotate it and then we click play oh man look at that So how about we scale it so we make it smaller and we click play and then we rotate it too. So now this is ultimate interactivity. So we can go up, down. And last one to play with, we'll do a little bit of scale and rotation. 
like that. And so with that, we turned our amazing art piece into a interactive art piece using scale, animation, and rotation. Last but not least, it's been a long journey, but it's time to build that augmented reality app. What we all been waiting for. So we're gonna open our build settings by just going to file and build settings. We're gonna add the AR scene that we're working in to the scenes in build. We gotta make sure to do that, otherwise if we build, we won't have our AR scene. We're gonna select player settings in the bottom left hand corner. We're gonna change the company name. We're gonna add an app icon. And you can do that if you like. Otherwise you can have the default icon, but I kinda like my own. Then we're gonna set the resolution to portrait mode. We're gonna add a logo in the splash screen and we're gonna preview it to make sure it's nice. And then if you have an Android device, you wanna set the minimum API to 26. And for iOS, you wanna set the minimum version to 11. And that's because augmented reality on mobile devices is not supported on every device. And so there's a minimum level of device application that these phones actually support. And so 26 for an Android and 11 for iOS is the best way to go. Lastly, if you're on an Android device, make sure to set the memory to external. And then when you're ready, time to build to the device. For an Android device, you'll have an APK. And then for iOS, you build directly to the device using Xcode. And so work on your naming conventions if you like and kind of go from there. So in this, we learned how to code a little bit. We learned a little bit of animation. We learned a little bit about the UI and user interface. We learned about drawing. We learned about how to combine all that with augmented reality. And now we'll learn how to actually make an app. So with this demo, we will be learning how to build an app with Android. And so one of the things that we need to do is first go to build settings, see which one that we're using. Again, we're using Android. One of the things that you need to do before is that you need to add the open scene. If you don't add the open scene, there won't be any scenes built and you won't see that experience. And so what we can do is we'll add open scene and you'll see it says AR drawing. And so from there, we'll go to player settings. We'll click our player settings and those will come up with the project settings that we want. And some of the things that we need to do. So for this, a de default company, mine is Iltopia Studios. If you have a chance, make sure to check out Iltopia Studios if you'll like. With Iltopia Studios, I also have a specific app tons of app icons. So I'll actually just drag one into the project file. And if you remember, I need to turn that into a 2D UI and I'll click apply. There you go. And then I'll go into 2D textures and there we go. So AR drawing app for by Iltopia Studios. And then I'll go through and you could play with the presentation a little bit for this one. I want to make sure that it's a native aspect ratio and that I want it to be in portrait mode. I don't want it to be in landscape because my UI is in portrait mode. So I only want it to be in, U in portrait mode. So I'll do that by resolution presentation and orientation default orientation is portrait mode from there. I can add a splash image. And so if I wanted to have the test app icon, I can do that. And so we could preview it by looking over to the side and say, okay, whoops, I actually don't want that wrong situation. There you go. So if I wanted to have a logo, I can do that by clicking the plus here in the draw mode and under logos. And then I could click that. 
like that. You can change it from dark on light, light on dark, and you click preview, and it will show that. If I want it to be a little longer, I can do that as well. If I wanted to change the background, I can change the background to white. And we'll see how that changes. So it's white, black background, boom, boom, boom. And then from there, we can take a look at some other settings. Uh, one thing you want to make sure is that you have it at, I want to say API level 26 is the lowest that you could, that you could have. And you want to make sure that that is the lowest API level target API is, um, well, we'll say automatic install the highest and the minimum API. So you don't, you don't want to change the, the target API. So we'll keep that as the highest. And then for this, you want to say at, I want to say 26 is the lowest to make sure that there aren't any problems. And then for prefer, uh, for install location, you want to make sure it's prefer external and write permissions. You want to have external for the SD card. Everything else should be good. Publish settings, all that. If you are pushing it to the app store, you would probably want to look into the default key store stuff. But because this is a development app, um, you know, we, we just won't worry about that right now. And so now that we have all our settings, it's time to build. And so before we build, again, you want to make sure that all of your stuff is saved. So save, save project. And then we'll go to file, we'll go to build settings, we'll go to build. And in this, I will save it to my drawing app. And so I'll say AR drawing app. And then what I like to do is I like to do underscore zero underscore one. Because I tend to do a lot of app builds. And so it's good to start getting your naming conventions right. And so this will be like pre-beta one of this series. And so I can go up to 100 for this and it will be under this series. If I do a new update after building or if I do a successful build and push it to the app store, then it will upgrade to one. And then all the next updates will be, you know, one, two, three, four, five, but this will be one. And so that's just one of the things that I like to do. But uh, we'll go ahead and click save and then it will start building. So now that we have our app, you'll notice it's right here. So we can go ahead. I like to copy, connect my phone to it, go to my SD card, and I'll just drag and drop right there. Not a problem at all. It has it right there. And so then I will disconnect my phone. So now that I have it on my phone, I'll go through, I'll click the APK. I'll click install now that it's open go ahead open it again it wants to get all the permissions to record and take pictures and all that stuff and I'm fine with that because I set it up myself and voila well you know I have the app working so what we'll do is we'll take a look. Oh man, look at that. So we have our app actually working on our phone. So we could scale it, make it big, we could make it small, we could rotate it, and we could click play. So we could click play. Make it big, small, big, small, and we can rotate it. Let's try that again. Rotation, 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 rotation. And there we go. So we went from having a drawing that we started off with, and now we have an interactive 
augmented reality animated cube just from a regular cube. Look at Cubie. He's doing well. And there we go. That is how we create an app. So our final challenge of this course is making that final app. So it's time to personalize your app. Give it a unique name, add a custom logo, custom app icons, and even some splash screens. If you really want to take it to the next level, let's try adding multiple splash screens. Maybe a story at the beginning. We all want to know how QB came to be. Is it a triumphant rise from the ashes? Or is it like Rocky, where you know, you're struggling to make ends meet? Have a little bit of fun with that. And then once you're done, post your app screens and the icons in the project section. And if you have some videos of your app with your cube or your drawing, make sure to post those as well. And so we finally made it, finally made it through the course. And it, it's, it's been a long time coming. And I really hope you all learned a valuable lesson on how to take your creativity to the next level. We took a very, very simple cube drawing and we turned that into an AR masterpiece. We learned tech, we learned art, we learned pure creativity and its bare bones form. And so to recap, in this course, we learned how to sketch, we learned how to draw simple illustrations, we learned how to scan a drawing without a scanner, how to work with image targets, how to set up Unity Game Engine and the Vuforia Engine for augmented reality, how to make a user interface, how to code a little bit, how to add some user controls to 3D objects, how to animate in Unity, and also how to build and export a mobile app. The foundations that you learned in this, the skills that you learned in this, we can translate to anything now. If it's a comic, if it's a sticker, if it's anything that you want, you have a foundation to, to build on and be an emerging technical and creative artist. I'm really excited to see what you all can come up with as you get further and further down this road of XR, creativity, and immersive storytelling. For me, I make comic books, I make animations I make all these things and I really really enjoy having the opportunity to combine the digital world with the physical world through augmented reality it's a wonderful opportunity to make things more immersive so that we can change the way that we interact with the world and we interact with creativity and so feel free to follow any of my other augmented reality courses if you are so inclined Hit me up and let me know how you like this class. Feel free to rate and review it, share it with your friends, and look out for more stuff from me. Again, my name is Steven Christian. I am a full stack AR developer, a visual storyteller, and your instructor. And I thank you for the time and hope to see you again for another wonderful tutorial series.